What's up, y'all? We're going to Bergamo. Should be a fun day. We're going to show you around and show you some really cool places to go see. Let's do this. Definitely the wrong card. Okay, I made it to Bergamo Airport. It costs 10 euros to get here from Milan. And now I'm gonna walk over, take the city bus to the town itself, and then we can start exploring. Okay, right outside the airport, you take the number one bus straight to the city of Bergamo, to the city center. So that's what I'm waiting for now. Okay. All right, so Bergamo is about an hour away from Milan. It's a really nice ride. It's very peaceful. It only costs 10 euros, and now I'm on the bus that costs two and a half euros to get into the city of Bergamo. And yeah, it's looking like a really nice day, so I'm excited to explore. Okay, got off the bus. First impressions of Bergamo. Bergamo. I want to get the pronunciation right. It smells really good. The buildings are really pretty. And it's just beautiful, honestly. I'm excited to explore this place. <laughs> Okay, so for any of you out there who aren't familiar with Bergamo, like me a week ago, Bergamo is separated into two parts. It's a rather small city, and it's Cita Bassa and Cita Alla Alta, which roughly translates to lower city and upper city. I got scared on the bus that I was gonna be taken back to the airport, so I think I got off in Cita Basta, which is the lower city, when most of the sites are actually up in the upper part. So I'm gonna walk there right now and show you around. If you haven't noticed, it's just me today. Rika is back in the United States, so it's gonna be a little weird by myself recording this vlog, but I'm gonna do my best to take you along this journey if you're along for the ride or teach you some cool stuff about this place that you may be planning on visiting. Let's do this. Life is a winding road no telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know One piece of advice that I have heard already is the lower town actually has cheaper food because the upper town's more touristy and stuff, so in case you're trying to get a bite to eat, I'd recommend getting it before you actually head up to the really big sites. The high city and up, not the high city and upper city, the high city and the lower city seem to be very literally named because the upper one is resting on this beautiful hill and you just see it from like all around Bergamo. Bergamo. Am I ever gonna get that pronunciation right? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> It's currently December 6th at the recording of this video and the Christmas spirit of this town is really cute. Check out these shops. There 
behind me, you have the EU flag, the Italian flag, and the Bergamo flag. Really cool. All right, here's a fact that I learned in my history classes and totally not by looking up on Google just now. The Venetian walls were built in the 16th century by the Republic of Venice to protect the city from the republics of Milan and France. Nowadays, the walls are a symbol of Bergamo's history and enclose a fairy-like town devoid of modernity. Dang, it just feels good to be that knowledgeable to know all of these things, you know? Like, I'm just so proud of my ability to know everything. All right. <laughs> I think I need Rika here to balance out my ridiculousness. I definitely agree. <laughs> All right, time to climb the stairs up to the high city. Apparently it should take about 10 minutes. This is steep. <sighs> Feels good though, you know, it's like a nice exercise fresh in the early morning ah, and it's beautiful too the air is so crisp the walls are a nice mix of green and old cobblestone feels like people 400 years ago could have been walking the same route all right I'm gonna stop talking because I'm getting out of breath <laughs> Okay, so right behind me are the massive Venetian walls. They were built to protect this city from neighboring provinces of Milan and France. They are really impressive. Like, I'm imagining an army trying to scale them and I think they would have a really difficult time because the city's already so high up and then the walls are like a dozen meters high. For my Americans out there, it's like 60 feet high. An army doesn't stand a chance to that. In researching this city, people often mentioned the Venetian walls, and I understand why. Like, they're so old, they're just huge. And there's this beautiful little walkway where you can just walk along them. So if you're visiting Bergamo, highly recommend just strolling along this wall and soaking up the views. And hopefully, if you get a day as nice as today, soaking up that clear sky. This city is also well known for its high medieval-like streets that even if it's super bright out like it is right now, it's still pretty dark inside these streets because they're so high up, the walls. Okay, I made it to the Piazza Vecchia, Vecchia? I don't know, our pronunciations are never good, so <laughs> I'm sorry if that's bad. Vecchia, I'm assuming it's Vecchia. People call it the heart of Bergamo. Um, there's a lot of restaurants, as you can see. There's a fountain and that beautiful white building. Also, apparently this huge building that was from the 12th century is a palace and a town hall. Double duty. So sweet. This looks like an amazing spot to go get a nice little coffee and maybe some breakfast. That's my plan. Uh, Parlez-vous anglais? Yeah. Okay, espanol. One table just, for one. Just for drinks? Uh, for coffee. Yeah. Coffee. Grazie. Okay, so for anyone who hasn't been to Italy specifically, they take their coffee super strong and only a tiny bit of it. So for an espresso, I literally got this tiny cup with like a sip of coffee. 
they actually call the wheat coffee Americano because in the United States we actually water it down a ton. Grazie. Okay, there are a ton of cafes in this little square and I'm gonna try out this one called the Cafe del Tasso, which is often considered to have some of the best ice cream in the town or gelato. You get yelled at if you call it ice cream here. Okay, it may seem like three euros is expensive, but for the best dessert place in Bergamo, easy money I'm gonna spend that. I always like to try the local desserts wherever I go. This is what I'm eating. Let's dig in. It's amazing. Okay, I think there's enough room for me. I'm going on like this side where there aren't a lot of people just because the other side was packed. And it seems like this is a nice little, very quiet, private thoroughfare. Like I don't hear anybody. Okay, so I found this really private garden type thing right next to the palace that no one's here. So if you come here and you're facing the palace, town hall, 12th century thing, if you go down the alleyway to the right, you'll come across this nice garden and find some peace amidst this really busy town. This is some major insider scoop stuff. If you want more insider secrets, and if you want to follow Rika and I as we go to 50 countries, make sure to hit that subscribe button. behind me is this gorgeous building, the Basilica Santa Maria Maggiore. It actually dates back to the Romans when it was a temple like a few thousand years ago and then it was turned into a church and now it's what's called a basilica which is I think a type of church but I also read it can be a town hall. Whatever it is, it is so detailed and cool to look at. I feel like from this angle you really can capture the detail. I also love the lions that are holding up the two pillars near the entrance. Okay, apparently it's not only the Basilica, but also the Cappella Colioni from the Colioni family. I think it's both of them. I'm not really quite sure. If y'all know, do you want to leave it in the comments and like tell me? I'm really curious, but can't figure out what's the truth online. Another little plaza garden with no one here and it's so quiet. I highly recommend when you're walking these super busy streets to just like turn off them and see where you go because every time I've done it, I'm blown away and it's so nice to just have a little bit of peace in a very cramped city. Okay, I'm trying to get to this fortress, Roca, Roca di Bergamo. And apparently it's the highest part in the city. And I love when you're trying to find places that are the highest point in the city, because even though it doesn't work all the time, you can usually just walk uphill and then you'll get there. And I think this is gonna work actually right now. Let's see. <laughs> Apparently the construction of La Roca began in 1331 when King John of Bohemia arrived in Bergamo. <laughs> what the heck? Hello. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. 
The views from this castle, it's sprawling. Bergamo is so much bigger than I thought it was. Wow, check this out. Super cool. Views are nuts. Oh, it is cold though. I'm getting snotty. And no tissues around. Nice. Found another epic view. If you come to Bergamo and do sightseeing like I am, be prepared to walk because that's how everyone gets around. So, you know what that means. Good shoes, not a ton of gear. I have a backpack, but I literally haven't opened it once. So just bring your essentials and then, yeah, explore. back on the Roman wall. I couldn't be happier. It's so pretty. Just walking on this wall has got to be my favorite thing about visiting Bergamo. You get such panoramic views of the city and it's just just a very pleasant time, honestly. All right, so I've been going down for a while, headed back down into Sita Basa, the lower city. I don't really know what I'm gonna find. I hear there's some cool shopping centers. Maybe I'll get hungry soon, but yeah. Hey y'all, remember this tree? At nighttime, they light it up. I love the contrast in Bergamo of the lower city and the upper city. This is still beautiful, but it's also more spread out so you have more light, which I really like. They turned these cement blocks into presents. Okay, so I made it onto Via XX Settembre, and if you're looking to go shopping in Bergamo, this is the place to go. Okay, it just brought me out to this alleyway, which is also very shopping heavy. It also has restaurants. And I always like to sort of try to find places in cities I'm visiting where there aren't tourists. But I feel like in Bergamo specifically, I know I've said it a few times, but it really pays off to take side tracks and sort of explore. Because pretty much wherever you go, it's really cool. I finished walking the Via XX Settembre and it is gorgeous. Like the buildings are all super colorful and they're all kind of the same shape. It's just a really cool environment. And there's a bunch of restaurants and plants. I haven't seen it on any things to do in Bergamo, but if you walk to the end of the Via XX Settembre, just take in the views. This is so pretty. <laughs> ciao, ciao, ciao. All right, I got some sweet raisin bread. I said arrivederci, ciao, grazie, prego, quanta questa? Which is like, goodbye, thank you, you're welcome. How much does it cost? <laughs> One might say I'm fluent in Italian. Bergamo, Bergamo. Piazza Vecchia, Vecchia. What can I say? I'm a fast learner. All right, stopped in this little cafe. I'm gonna have a little coffee. It's a bit late, 4 p.m. I hope I sleep tonight, but just gonna chill for a second. Well, 
Bello! <ride> Grazie! Prego! Arrivederci! Ciao ciao! Ciao ciao! Adio! Bello! Buongiorno! There's actually a neighboring kebab restaurant on the other corner, and I'm guessing there's quite a bit of competition. I went to this one because I love falafel. This is such a good way to finish off the day. All right, so I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And in case you missed like the 10 million times Rick and I have said it, we're trying to go to 50 countries. And if you wanna follow us along and help us out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Take care, peace out y'all.